everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Brief Talk Podcast. We have a brief tale with someone who I've been after a little while to get on the show, who finally is on the show. It's Mr. Eric, who you may know from Instagram as the Jocker Room. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be part of this. Glad you're. we finally got our schedules together and yes, made it yes. happen, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, busy, busy boys. Yes, busy boys. And I've always loved your Instagram account. So oh, thank you. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Always glad to hear that. So I always look it up and it's, you have the ones taken at work and you have a yes. variety of different things you wear. So mm-hmm. it's always like, yay, okay. <laughs> so I, figured you'd be- I like to give a variety. Variety is the spice of life. And I thought you'd be great on the podcast. And you seem like the everyday guy out there because you have white briefs to everything. In, to, I think you have jocks, thongs, everything in between. So yep. it's good yep. to have you on to talk about your love and share with the world who you are. Yeah, I'm very happy to do so. Put a face on the undies. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. If our listeners are not privy to your Instagram account, maybe they're not on it. Maybe they don't follow you. Tell them a mm-hmm. little bit about you. So, yeah, um, you know, I'm kind of, like you said, I think I'm a pretty average guy. You know, nothing majorly spectacular in terms of I'm not super muscled. I'm kind of just your regular little otter. Um, I'm a shorter guy, which actually a lot of people have been surprised by when I tell them I'm only 5'6", but angles are everything. <laughs> you do not have 5'6". Um, yeah, see, I, I feel like it's it's better to to get the whole body in, and that's why it kind of ends up making me look really tall because I'm filling the whole frame. But but I like to kind of show everything because you know there's too much of just the the close up of the of the undies and stuff like that, and and kind of like you said, I like to to give the whole show, give the whole me personality, so you can see where I'm at. So for a long time, I was working at a place where I had to change every day in a locker room, and so started setting my phone up there. Um, it was a pretty abandoned a locker room in that case you know not a lot of traffic in and out because i was in a small area so easy enough to just prop the phone up and and take a couple pictures there and then i'm now trans just transition new job so now i'm just taking it in the toilet stall on occasion because same thing i can kind of sneak away get in there and and take pictures of that i take pictures pictures all over the house kind of give a little taste of of who i am because I'm just an average guy, and so that's that's kind of the fun of it for me, is showing me as an average person and, and what average people wear. Exactly. You're kind of like what everyone out there, because usually social media, you want to put your, you know, hottest pictures, hottest poses, mm-hmm. and whatnot. But you're more like, okay, I have this today, I have this today, like the rest of us. Yeah. You know, I may wear something really great one day and something not so great the next day, or, <laughs> you know... Right, I right. Want to have our great, spectacular lives on social media, but you seem more down to earth, more real, more not like, oh, look at me, I'm fabulous, I'm wonderful, and that's I'm amazing. That's really what I try to do. I say on days that I I don't exactly, you know, I don't feel my best. I'll still post. You know, I'm not really like you said. I'm not trying to to give any facade to it. You know, and, and kind of just showing like this is what what life is. I, you know, I I hate the fill the filter that you know, social media gives people. So I like to take mm-hmm. down that barrier for a bit. And so I let people see, you know, when I, you know, based on the pose, sure, like my back's all, you know, back rolls and stuff like that. Or, you know, I've been sitting on my ass all day. So you can see all the, the, the crease lines and stuff like that. Like that's what people look like. So I'm just going to post it. I'm not really going to, to try to hide it or try to get the best angle. You can see scars on occasion. You can see, you know, you know, back knee and stuff like that. And that's real life. That's people. That's what I like to show. And you do a good job of it, I will say. I do. Thank you. <laughs> I have for a while. So, or I wouldn't ask you to come on if I wouldn't have. Right. <laughs> well, that's what our podcast is about. It's about real guys. Mm-hmm, exactly. So when did you first discover underwear and your love of underwear? It really started early for me, honestly. You know, I remember back when I was a kid in uh, middle school, <laughs> It's it starts off with, uh, with uh, sex ed. Honestly, Uh, we had, uh, uh, (laughs) I know, right. It's always a scary subject, uh, back then it can lead to so many open doors. Uh, I'm kidding. Actually, that's, you know, that's not what a sex ed does. Just so we're clear. I'm all about like, let's actually talk about sex and sex ed, but 
But it was actually funny because we kind of had that a little bit more closed off version of it. Um, we had the one day session in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. And we got our little pamphlet that was sponsored by Old Spice. And so it started off with, you know, like, here's your changing body. Here's what, you know, your testicles are doing. Here's you're going to notice body hair. Um, and there's just this FAQ section at the back that just said, by the way, if you, you know, should I wear a jock strap? Well, you should talk to your coach or a trusted adult. Nowhere else in there had it talked about any sort of underwear, any sort of, you know, protection or things like that. So, like, I kind of got fixated on that because, you know, being a, a child discovering my body, I was a little bit fascinated with that pamphlet. But that was kind of the thing that hung up with it. And I'm, I'm a millennial, so I did have access to the Internet. So then I started looking up jock straps. And so then that's kind of where it all started. It was, okay, well, these are something that make people, you know, that highlight certain parts of the body. <laughs> um, yes, it does. And it kind of started from there. And so then it was, you know, what are the things that I can currently wear being a younger uh, adult at that point in middle school, things like that. So so stuck with the briefs first and, and then started going from there. Nice. So when did it branch out? And to just, you had to have more and more styles. When did it become, you know, yeah, your thing, as they say? Yeah. <laughs> that really happened in college. You know, I was a little bit sheltered throughout high school. You know, small town, classic. You know, parents very involved. Always do my laundry and stuff like that. So didn't really feel comfortable getting the uh, mm-hmm. the rotation in. And so when it was, you know, I was on my own uh, in college and was doing my own laundry and things like that, that's really when I was, I had bookmarked, (laughs) I had bookmarked a lot of undies that I had my eye on for a long time. And so finally, freshman year of college, and I was like, okay, bye, I'm going to buy it now. And And so that's when. Came pouring in. Yep. They really did. Um, Say a couple of jock straps at first and then started getting into the. Uh, designer briefs and things like that because those were cheaper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Surprisingly, my brother actually kind of got me uh, a little bit in- invested in those, I guess, because he was a similar build as me. He's a little bit bigger, and so he started wearing designer underwear because he's he's a little bit more of the jock type. So he was a, uh, you know, he's one that will walk around still in his underwear while we're home for or for Christmas or something like that or visiting for family vacations. So like you can, he's not shy about his, his underwear, stuff like that. So he was wearing this more designer stuff. And he actually asked my mom for, uh, for underwear for Christmas one year. And she got the size down. She got my size. And then she got a pair of briefs and apparently he doesn't like briefs. So he likes the trunk version instead and said, here, do you want these? And I said, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah. And so then I was like, well, where did you get these? Like, where did you recommend that you, that she gets these? And it was from TJ Maxx. And he's like, yeah, you can get a lot of good designer underwear for pretty cheap at TJ Maxx. And okay, great. Let's go. <laughs> so Awesome. And so is your brother older or younger? He's older. He's okay. two years older than me. Okay. Interesting. That's kind of cool, though. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We've been we've gotten really close. So say being so close in age, growing up, that definitely was uh, you know, sibling rivalry. We we did not get along together, but but since we've kind of, you know, spread out a little bit, you know, getting our own lives, we've become very, very close. Um, different parts of the country. We both are, you know, live away from home, so we kind of get the same same experience and so we've become very, very close. We talk about everything together and underwear just happens to go into it (laughs) that that's that's a first for the podcast i will say um (laughs) i don't know anyone else who talks underwear with their brother Uh, yeah yeah so that's very interesting very cool i will yeah we're very open with each other and it does help uh so i i personally identify as gay he identifies as pansexual so that does you know, kind of help in that regard as well to kind of have a similar life experience there to be able to talk about things more openly that maybe we don't talk about with other people. Yeah, because I have a brother and yeah, we do not talk about, no, 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 no. (laughs) That is not something. And mm. so that I'm in piece of because yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So do you remember the first really good pair of underwear you bought? whether it was either in high school or college that really stuck out? 
the first pair that I really bought that I really liked, um, and I still have, <laughs> I still have it. Yeah. Nice. Um, is a pair of red Calvin Klein briefs. So they were that little bit of um, mesh. It's not quite actual mesh. It's not quite athletic fabric like that, but um, but kind of has that slight like micro pore to it. Mm-hmm. It was just a really good cut, you know, really supportive of, of the curves and everything like that, and, and was able to kind of not get stretched out during the day. Because that's one of the things with, with kind of cheaper pairs is that you put them on, they're nice and snug, and then by the end of the day, they're a little bit baggy. They mm-hmm. kind of stretched out a little bit. But this was the first really good pair that like really lasted and and you know that bright red and I, I love bright colors so it was kind of that nice classic cut but still still kind of newer and flair to it so it was really really good. And then how did this pair pro- propel you forward in your underwear love? Did it make you try new things? Did oh yeah, you- definitely. Yeah, that was when I kind of started going into the different brands more. Especially ones that were a little bit more classic brands, like everyone knows of, of Calvin Klein underwear. Mm-hmm. There's the joke back in Back to the Future. So yep. um, it's one of those kind of classics, but kind of higher end classics. You know, growing up, I always wore um, like Hanes or Fruit of the Loom and things like that. So this was kind of that first step into more of, okay, well, you can get some higher end underwear and not break the bank, but it's also worth it. <laughs> so yes. yeah, that's what kind of propelled me into. Let's try these different brands. Let's actually try to elevate instead of just going with classics. Well, back in my day, it sounded like an old man. They really <laughs> weren't that much because I remember back in the day, I was talking with, I think it was Stevie for a podcast we were planning. And with the Back to the Future, those Calvin Klein briefs had like the white waistband and there were different colors. And I told mm-hmm. Stevie, mm-hmm. I said, back when I was in high school, those were $8 a pair. I remember that wow. because they had a whole rainbow of colors, like green. I don't know if they had pink back then, but it was like green, red, and they're all like pastel colors. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. I wanted the whole collection, but it was $8 <laughs> a pair, and I'm going, where am I going to get $8 to buy underwear? Um, right. This was before I was working and whatnot and had transportation, but I'm like, I want everything. So, Mm -hmm. underwear has exponentially grown over the years in price. Yes. Yes, it has. (laughs) And especially the the number of brands that are getting into it now, it makes, you know, now I've got a lot of specialty underwear, it feels, which means they can also charge top dollar. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is one thing that is not slowing down is the cost, (laughs) because you used to get a pair... Eh, twelve, fifteen dollars, great pair. Right. Now it's twenty-five, thirty, and I've seen some forty and fifty. Oh, easily, easily. And if you want Versace, you got to pay even more. But yeah, it's it's not a cheap hobby to have. No, <laughs> no, it is not. Yeah, I can only imagine how much I've spent throughout the years if I would try to t- tally it up. It's pricey. As they say in texting, pricey AF. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Yes. yes. Dollar, dollar, dollar. But we still buy, and I encourage everyone to buy as much as possible because, you know, you can never have enough. That is my mm-hmm. motto. Yes. Underwear. Never, never, never. When someone goes, don't you have enough? And I'm like, oh, bite your tongue. No. <laughs> What's wrong with you? No, that's not correct. That's not correct. There's always room for more. I'm like, mm. I was like, whoever I date when I date, usually they don't ask that question. And I'm like, did you just ask that? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. So, what are your current favorite styles and brands? What are your go tos right now? So, I'm been big on the briefs right now. I say lots of, of kind of just support and classic, um, but still makes me feel sexy. And that's what I really mm-hmm. like. Especially being at a, at a fairly new job, there's sometimes a little bit of okay, maybe my whole ass is hanging out. Maybe like that's focusing too much when I wear a jock strap or wear a thong. But so it's it's easier just to grab a quick pair of briefs uh, and go with that and kind of feel still sexy, still um, secure, but a little bit less than the most extremes I've done. 
And in terms of brands, Nasty Pig is always one of my favorite brands. Okay. Their construction is always, you know, amazing. And their fabric is so soft. And there's also a, a newer brand that I tried recently. It's called Bow Boy, B-E-A-U Boy. Same thing. Their stuff is so soft. Oh, my God. It's, it's incredible. I highly I've recommend those as well. Heard of them. I think so. I say they're fairly new. If I remember correctly, they just launched last year. So they're, they're kind of on the newer side. But also, they're all about um, sustainability and ethical sourcing of their materials as well. So, so very good things. <laughs> um, I'm very much an environmentalist. So, uh, you know, anytime that anything is, is focusing on where stuff comes from and what is packaged and things like that, that's always a bonus in my, in my book as well. Nice. Yeah, there are more and more brands coming out. We had, what was it, Walden Swimwear a while back? I think they're still around. That were sustainability, and Mm -hmm. that was one of their hallmarks of theirs. And some of the other brands coming up are focusing on sustainability as opposed to, you know, here's hot underwear, wear it for a week, and then get rid of it. Right, yes. Yeah, that recycle culture in that sense where it is just take it, use it, throw it away, bring back a, a new pair. It's mm, Let's focus on actually, you know, keeping a pair around for at least a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I like brands that stick around a while and have good stuff who are made well, at least have it for several years, if not more. I'm still impressed mm. you have that first pair you bought. I have <laughs> nothing I bought. Of course, that wouldn't fit in it now, but... It's true. Some of them have definitely had to take the, the back seat, the ones that were especially tight to begin with, or a lot of Asian sizes, you know, you get yes. them and they're they're different. So it's like, okay, I can make it work still. But throughout the years, those have had to, to go to the back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there's two, two Japanese brands that I really love, but their 2XL is like 34. And yeah. I'm going... Very different. I'm like, <laughs> I... No, that's just not happening. I love the designs. I love the colors. I love everything about it. But I'm like, no, I could not. Mm-mm. Nope. Not that's just trying. not going to work. <laughs> not even trying. Sorry. Not happening. But yeah, you have to be careful with the ones from South America, from Japan, mm-hmm. Korea. They always run yeah. way smaller. Exactly. The only ones that really, I think, fit truest or usually mostly australian brands they're oh yeah i'm fun. a big fan of of aussie bum as well they're another really good brand that they have fun and exciting stuff but they also you know they they are constantly going on sale which is also a bonus <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> but we, their customer service is great too which is nice one of our former guests he uh Loves to shop their sales, and um, when I get the fifty percent off sale, I always say, "Hey, we're going to shop the fifty percent off sale." And he's like, "Shut up! I do not yeah. need to buy anymore." I was like, right. "Just tell your husband these have been here all along. They were you don't remember seeing them? Yeah, they've right. been here a while. What's what's wrong with you?" But he's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Don't you know how to do that?" Or just the <laughs> the Patsy Stone? Don't question me comes right, to mind right. too. I'm like, mm, don't question me. Just just do your thing and move on. Thanks. Well, unless you just say they were on sale, I made sure to price shop first and, and you know, it could have been worse. <laughs> it's like, look, I saved you money. I saved you 50%. And then mm-hmm, they always mm-hmm. go, well, you bought 50% more. So I saved you 100%. Hello. <laughs> Add the two together. You're welcome. That's totally how math works. You're welcome. It it does. It's like, you're welcome. As people say, I wonder why you're single. And I go, I don't. I don't wonder why at all. I know why. Um, <laughs> and I'm okay with it. Right. Totally I've crazy. accepted that. <laughs> so you told your, you and your brother talk underwear, which blows my mind. I'm uh-huh, uh-huh. that. Amazing. <laughs> Do you have other friends or such that you talk underwear with or know about oh, your yes. passion of underwear? Yeah, so so my Instagram is, you know, I, I'm pretty open with that. Most of my friends know that I have it. Several of them are followers. And say so my my last boyfriend, to say he, we connected through that, I'll say it that way, um, you know, kind of was aware of me, uh, saw me on the, the social media apps and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, through, through the, you know, grapevine, 
found my Instagram and, you know, messaged me on there and I wasn't shy about it. And it was like, okay, cool. Like, well, I, you know, interested in the same thing. So, so yeah, a lot of people do know about it. And, you know, I'm very open about my sexuality as well. And that includes uh, my kinks and fetishes, which include underwear. So it definitely comes up and, and people are, are well aware of it. <laughs> nice. And I've definitely made some good, like, internet connections in that sense where, you know, my just uh, one friend in particular, Philip, you know, he lives in different states. He's a, a, a flight attendant, so he's always bouncing around, but we still kind of check in with each other. You know, we'll spot pictures of our undies back and forth here and there. So it's nice to have that connection and I have it with a lot of people. <laughs> now, that's a good thing about the world of underwear, though, is everyone is, it's a friendly group for the most part. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. all sorts of people. The podcast has introduced me to way more people than the blog ever did because you get to interview them and talk to them. And it's just amazing how many people you get, like yourself, who are like, hey, do you want to come on the podcast? Some people are like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> and some yeah. of them are like, well, they think it's like, I've had two people go, is this like a joke? No. <laughs> what? are you talking about? You're not going to make fun of me, are you? And I'm like, have you no. listened to the podcast by chance? Right, right. <laughs> First and thing, like, listen before you ask that. <laughs> I was like, go listen to a few and then get back to me. This is yeah. not like, get you one and go, ha ah. ha. No, that's no not this like, isn't a gotcha. This is a whole thing. And everyone's like, oh my God. I'm like, uh, you need to listen. But Yeah. <laughs> So it's it's amazing to bring community together and bring things together and people and you get to meet all these fun people who share the same interests, which Exactly. Which you know, me living in the big town of Atlanta, there are a ton of people who mm-hmm. you think would love underwear and I usually meet people like in LA and Middle America and New York and Boston and all over. It's not just people here. And right, then, of course, right. when you talk to people, oh, I know somebody who lives underwear. There is so-and-so. And I'm like, I don't know who that is. And they're like, oh, look at them on Instagram. You'll see. And I'm like, how come I never run across these people? Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, hmm. So, but it, it brings people together and it really builds a good community and I think everyone supports everyone and of course the ones that yeah. don't, you're just like whatever move on right Stop right you. and that's what I kind of love about some of these pride events more and more you know they have all these you know vendor shops the booths and stuff like that and like, they're all selling underwear now so it is it's kind of a you know even if it's not like even here in Charleston um, very surprisingly at our last pride we had it wasn't exactly the greatest because of certain um, you know, things with size. We had some scheduling issues that it kind of got docile around. So still a fairly small event, but they still had uh, a booth from, I think it was actually from Atlanta, from a, someone that came from Atlanta selling underwear and swimwear and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more part of that conversation, part of the community where it is, you know, even if people aren't uh, able to wear it in celebration of pride, it's still, okay, well, we're comfortable enough to, to browse and look at it together and say, well, this is a fun pair. This is a fun pair. So it does kind of start to bridge that gap. It has kind of become more of a common thing for, Mm -hmm. for the gay community to embrace. Yeah. Here in Atlanta, we have, of course, the massive pride that we have and it's Mm -hmm. way too many people for me. It's like 300,000 (laughs) friends and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I've been many times worked the parade, been in the parade, worked boots. Yeah, I'm good. And now they're getting, oh, it needs to be family friendly. And I'm like, what? No. And I'm going, okay, you need to have a section of the park that is family friendly. Gotcha. Right. You need to there have you a go. Section of the park that is not family friendly because mm-hmm. there are us who do not want children. I was just having this conversation with my mother earlier about <laughs> children. And I'm like, I don't want them. I don't, I will be around them. I like them, but I don't want to be in charge of them. Right. And I definitely and that's my biggest them. thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if you want to have your children, go over there and have your children over there and let me have my adult fun over here and underwear and whatever else. Right. Right. Perfect. But they give underwear vendors so much grief here when they go. And I'm just like, uh, get over it. That's such a shame. That's such a shame. I'm like, 
Well, fetishes in general are now being widely more accepted. And like, mm-hmm. I think OnlyFans spurred that along. And now Oh, very can, much so. You can express yourself in underwear or leather or latex, spandex, whatever you want to do. It's like on the table and everyone's like, oh, cool, whatever. Because before mm-hmm. it was like, you whispered, oh, no, I like this and that. And now it's like, who right. cares? You like, okay, that's tame. We're not right, about exactly. It's definitely shifted. There's a lot less taboo about about some of these things. But still, I'm, a lot of guys in underwear won't say they're in underwear until you bring it up first. And I'm still like, all right, come on now. It's 2023. Come on. <laughs> just just say it. Who cares? Right, like underwear. right. All right. Yay. Move on. So, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like get on that high horse. I'm planning for <laughs> the people who didn't hear our pre conversation, I'm planning the whole year and have a massive document I'm working on that has so much more than this. This and a lot more. So get yes. ready, people. There's gonna be some good shows this year. Yay. Um <laughs> lots of t- topics to delve into. Oh, we got everything to delve into. You name it. I have it on this list. And still not complete, but that's for another time. You can't hear all my secrets at once, people. <laughs> Gotta keep this. <laughs> Underwear kind of spurs confidence in people. And are there times you wear underwear to boost your confidence or give you confidence in your either work or personal life? Or do you use underwear yeah. that way? Yeah, yes, I do. I say, especially on those days, you know, where there are going to be some stress so for instance like i i made sure to wear a nice pair of underwear um my interview when i went for my new job and stuff like that because it does kind of give that boost um especially between you know that was i was ugh, i had such a long interview it was four hours total but break in between but it was four sessions that were you know 45 minutes each so it was a long day so every time it was you know start a session go to the session okay get up walk around Kind of having that, you know, being able to feel what undies I was wearing kind of as that reminder, it was a little bit of a that confidence booster to be like, right, okay, like, I'm crushing it. You know, I know that I'm great. <laughs> I feel confident when I'm wearing just these. So now, like, I feel confident that I'm wearing while I'm wearing them now for this interview. So nice. definitely that that helps. And, you know, on the other side of it, in terms of relationships, you know, going on that, that first date definitely kind of is more helpful to be like, right, okay, like, the same thing. You know, I like who I am, and I I like who I am when I'm wearing these, and I'm going to wear these to this date, so that way I will continue to like myself. I don't have to feel that same kind of pressure the same that you would for uh, the first jitters. See, on the first date, I wear something super sexy, because Mm -hmm. just that reason, because I have friends like, oh, no, I'm not going to wear anything too sexy on the first date. I'm like, no, that's the time to wear it. Right, right. (laughs) No judgments if you have sex on the first date, because... Lord knows I've been there, done that. So no judgment. But usually mm-hmm, mm-hmm. people don't see the first... On the first date, if it's someone you're interested in, you're not really going to push it that far, but sometimes it goes over the cliff and you go right along with it. Right. But you wear something... <laughs> it's all the right. chemistry. Exactly. Uh, no judgments. I've done it many times myself, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> people, as they say, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, so... Exactly right. Yeah. So I wear it and I'm open about it with people I date, and I always have to change their underwear because their underwear sucks. <laughs> it's always like, what is this? Right. Oh, you usually, can do better. You can do better. That's usually after. I don't want to set the mood for him, but usually after, it's like, oh, what is this? No, no, no. We've got, nope. Nope. <laughs> and then all my exes have changed underwear. And my most recent ex, he got married a couple of years back, and I told his husband, "It's like you can thank me for the underwear things." Right, right. There you go. <laughs> because damn, before work, you could only sing. You're oh welcome. boy, you're welcome. But underwear brings confidence and everything to everyone listening, which is amazing to hear. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you if you haven't heard my interview story, I'll tell you afterwards because I've only told it like thirty times, and I don't want to edit it out. So I'll tell you. Um, okay <laughs> but yeah i've told it many times and i've cut it out of one just recently because i'm like oh this again shut up yeah i talk to myself when i edit podcast people so you just have to realize 
and it's usually about myself. So I don't ever talk talk badly about guests. It's usually like, oh, don't say that damn word again. Shut up. Oh, my God. (laughs) And it's always me I'm talking about. So most of the guests are wonderful, fabulous, and hardly any work for me to do. But certain ones are are not. But luckily... (laughs) Luckily, Eric did not nod when I asked him a question, so it's good. Well, good, good. <laughs> this is an audio podcast, and we can't hear a nod. There you go, exactly. Before, which we've had before. <laughs> and it's like, oh, no, we can't hear you nod, sweetie. No, sorry. <laughs> no. Audibly, bring that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you've got to expand more and don't just say yes. So we didn't have that problem this podcast. It was an awesome podcast. Ended all our questions already. Hard to believe we're done already. Uh, so the most important question is where can people find you online? Yeah. So I am on Instagram. That is at the Jocker room. So T H E J O C K E R R O O M. Um, and then on Twitter, because you know, you can't have as many characters and they want to use the word the, it is at Jocker room selfie. J O C K E R skip it R O O M S E L F I E. So just one R between the jocker and the room there. Well, I did not know you were on Twitter. I will have to follow you. Oh, surprise. Surprise. It's on the Twitter. I will follow you after this. I only follow you on Instagram. So yes. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, you are very welcome. Glad to be part of it. Exactly. It's good to have you on and finally get our schedules together. And it was a pure pleasure. So thank you again. Yes. And everyone, thank you for listening. We will have another podcast for you very soon. Hopefully next week. If I get off my butt and do it. Yay. I got to get schedules together. So wish me luck. Because I will need it. <laughs> Uh, have a great week and we will talk to you soon. Bye everyone. Bye. -bye. Thanks for listening to our show. If you like what you hear, consider supporting us at Patreon at patreon.com slash UNB blog. Follow us on social media. You can follow the blog at UNB blog on Twitter and Instagram. Read the blog at unbblog.com. Also follow me if you like art or anything else fun and underwear at unbtim on Instagram and also Twitter. Thanks for listening and we'll have more podcasts at you very soon. Bye.